Welcome to the build video for the arithmetic module from Modulov. Going to start by placing the electrolytic capacitors. Pay close attention to the white line marking the negative side of the capacitor and line it up with the footprint on the PCB. Now you can go ahead and place the power adder, making sure that the arrow lines up with the white line on the PCB. Note that the notch should be facing the Arduino Nano footprint. Also place the female header for the Arduino Nano, which is closest to the power header. Now we can also heat up the soldering iron and get ready to solder the first components in place. I'm using my finger to hold the components in place and suggest to use the one pin solder method to fix all of the components in place for easier soldering. Be careful with the power header to not solder the pin that you are touching with your finger. Once you have fixed the components with a single pin, you can check if they are sitting flush with the PCB and readjust by reheating before soldering the rest of the legs. I have found personally that this technique makes through hole soldering quite fast and easy and generally results in a very clean finish. The reason it is important to solder on this Arduino Nano header at the beginning is because the encoder, once placed, will cover the pins and make it impossible to solder on the header afterwards. You may also trim the legs of the capacitors once they've been soldered in place. It is highly recommended to trim the pins from the Arduino Nano header which are inside the encoder footprint. If the encoder has a metal body, there is a chance that it will short circuit these pins with each other. I also like to reflow these trimmed pins in case there is any solder sticking up after cutting. It also looks much cleaner like this. I am now continuing on to solder the rest of the pins in place from the power header and the female Arduino Nano header. Now we can place all of the jacks and the encoder, but do not solder any of these yet. It is much easier if we place all of these components and then attach the front panel first before soldering. This will also ensure that the front panel will fit mechanically. We can also place the LEDs before attaching the front panel. It is important to be careful with the polarity of the LEDs. The short leg indicates the ground pin and should be inserted into the square-shaped pad. If you have bipolar LEDs, then you can also check which color you want by powering them from a breadboard power supply. If you have purchased a full DIY kit from us, there will be bipolar LEDs in the kit. These LEDs are red in the normal polarity and green if you reverse them. You can choose which color you would like to use for each channel. I will use an extra nut 
and attach it to the encoder so that the front panel will sit at the same height as the level of the other components on the PCB. Now, place the front panel and attach all of the nuts to secure it in place before soldering. I will begin with the LEDs as they can be a little bit trickier to place correctly and use the one pin method adjusting the position as needed before soldering the second pin. The LED should be lined up and centered with the diffusers on the front panel. They should also be sitting flush against the front panel to ensure that enough light comes through. After soldering the LEDs in place, I will trim the legs to make it easier to solder the jacks. Now I will continue by soldering all of the jacks in place, being careful that they are sitting flush against the PCB. I am now soldering the five pins and support lugs of the encoder. These can be a bit more difficult because the capacitors and female pin header are in the way, so be careful here. Once these components are placed and soldered, we can remove the front panel and place and solder the remaining female pin header for the Arduino Nano. I am using the Arduino Nano to hold the female pin header in place and make it easier to solder. I start by soldering two pins on each of the male pin headers on the Arduino Nano and continue soldering the bottom side of the PCB, getting all of the pins from the female pin header. I'm also adding a bit more solder to the top side of the PCB on the encoder legs to ensure more stability. Now I am placing the screen using the protection frame that came with it as a spacer to push it against the front panel. You may also want to remove the protective film to quicken the build. Push the pins through and hold the screen in place while you place the front panel on and attach the nut to the encoder. This will hold it in place, making it much easier to solder the screen. I am leaving the Arduino Nano in place here to solder the four pins, but you may also remove it if it's easier. I will now finish soldering the male pin headers on the Arduino Nano. Protective film from the screen before. I will now have to remove the front panel again to be able to do so. I'm also doing a quick visual spot to see if there are any problems that are visible with the soldering before attaching the front panel and finishing the build.
unfortunately this type of knob tends to slip too far down the shaft of the encoder. This prevents the push button from working properly. To fix this issue, I will place a piece of paper or something similar inside the knob so that the shaft pushes against it. With this last step, the build process is complete and you should have a fully functioning arithmetic. We recommend doing a quick test to make sure that there is no shorts between ground negative 12 volts and positive 12 volts. This is easily done using a multimeter and checking for continuity.